Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. Hi, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another military ration taste test. Today, I'm going to be tasting this. And this is a Polish 24-hour ration sent to me by Matt. Matt, thank you so much for sending this to me. This is going to be my first Polish ration taste test ever. And look at the size of this thing. It is huge. So along with the ration pack, Matt also included this and this. How great is that? Velcro this onto the back of my hat. And I've got my Polish flag, which I can include right in front there. Awesome. Alrighty, so now that I'm officially outfitted, let's go ahead and open this. Look at the size of this thing. It is huge. It is very heavy. And Matt also included four pages of notes, so I can go ahead and tell you in detail what is inside this ration pack. So it contains enough food to feed someone for 24 hours. This plastic feels very similar to the plastic found on a US MRE, very thick mill. The color, of course, is different and the package is quite larger. This is a dark forest green and it does not have a peelable seal. Look at this! Paper cups, awesome, I've never, had a ration that actually includes paper cups. What else? Oh my gosh, here's the official list of items. Two packets of utensils and napkins. Looks like there is a regular plastic spoon, a fork, and a small spoon in there as well, and a knife. This is very light. I think these are the rye crackers that Matt wrote about in his notes. This is a fruit bar, chocolate bar, dried fruit. These are some concentrated instant drink pouches, a tin of potted meat, some jam, honey, and this is a little hexamine heater. Ooh, another kind of potted meat. Oh, I like that lid. Can save that for later. Very smart. Oh, another package of crackers. Wow, this has a lot of stuff in it. Three more beverage pouches. Oh, another set of plastic utensils. Ooh, this looks like the main right here. Look at that, nice tin, another main. And lastly, two packages of crackers or kind of like hard tack. Let's go ahead and see what's inside this bag of paper cups. This is kind of similar to an accessories pack. I have to say, I love the addition of paper cups. It really kind of frees up some space. If you're using your canteen or using your canteen cup to heat up your food, then you have paper cups to have your beverages in. Brilliant! and it's not plastic. Two resealable plastic bags. Matt actually says these plastic bags are for customizing your own ration. And one plastic bag. So this bag is a trash bag. It's kind of flimsy, so Matt says he likes to use this bag instead. So far, I'm really impressed with the quality of everything so far. And we have a roll of toilet tissue, three wet wipes, two packages of salt, two packages of pepper, three vitamin C candies, three coffee candies, three xylitol gums, which is used in lieu of toothbrushing. It contains xylitol, which doesn't allow bacteria to stick to your teeth, therefore keeping things fresh and clean. Package of sugar, instant coffee as opposed to freeze-dried coffee. It's a powder, but it does come together instantly. There's also supposed to be a gusseted bag with water disinfectant but I don't see that in here. Maybe it'll appear later in the ration. First thing I'm gonna do is clean up my hands with a Be Fresh Wet Nap. I hope these are lemon scented and with a little lemon in the corner, I think it's gonna be. Those are my favorite. All right, I can smell the lemon already. It smells great. It smells just like the ones I remember. It's the same kind of material. Nice and lemon fresh. It smells like Lemon Fresh Joy soap. Next, let's open up our little heater here. This is similar to a hexamine stove. I'm not gonna be doing this inside because that would be quite toxic, but let's open it and see what it looks like inside. Here's the instructions on how to assemble it. And look how much fuel it includes. That's impressive. I've never had a ration that includes this many fuel tablets. So it looks like there's two six packs of fuels. Great big matches, those are impressive. Looks like they're dipped in wax. And here is a bag. Ooh, another box of matches. Oh, it actually comes in a box, I love that. How charming is that? 
And here is the heater itself. So what they have illustrated here is a can. So I thought there was some sort of piece that makes a little can, but this is actually illustrating the ration itself. So you take this entree and you bend this around it to create a handle. Okay, let's do this. We're gonna fold the sides of this up. Nothing new here. Okay, so those become the legs of the stove. And then we're gonna open up one of the fuel tablets place that right there. Because I'm inside, I'm not gonna actually light this, but imagine me lighting that. Next, we use this little piece of metal here and bend it into a handle. So this demonstrates a couple different ways that you can make the handle. One being like this. So you can bend it at a 90 degree angle and another 90 degree angle. And you can use it to pick up. Oh my gosh, look at that. Brilliant! When it's hot, you just lift it off like that. So stinking smart. So you can fashion it like this, kind of like a letter C, or you can do a triangular version, more kind of like that. Brilliant. So stinking clever. I love that. No need for pots and pans, you just use the tin provided. So smart. Let's go ahead and test these out. Ooh, that lit beautifully and just went out beautifully as well. Let's try one of these. Ooh, look at that. That's a much bigger burn and longer burn. Much more appropriate for the hexamine stove. Look, you can barely put it out. All right, I'm gonna go stick this in my sink. <laughs> So those both work beautifully. Since I won't be using the provided stove to heat up my food, I'm gonna just use some boiling water. So Matt just explained to me something new that I never knew about, but traditionally in Poland, people have two meals a day. One big meal in the day, what we would call breakfast, but in Polish they call it something more like dinner, a kind of lunch brunch dinner, big meal, usually has some kind of savory item. And then they would have their supper, or what we might call in the US dinner, later in the day, so two big meals. So that's why there are two main meals in this ration, based on that tradition. Okay, so this one is pork neck and gravy with vegetables. And I'm gonna heat this up in some boiling water, but he told me it's important to give this a crack and open it up a little bit for venting. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Ooh, that looks great already. I've got a pot of hot water, I'm gonna place that inside and then I'm gonna heat that up on the stove. And these are similar to baked beans. I have to say, I love these lids. You can save your food that you don't finish if you're interrupted for whatever reason. You can just pop these back on, place them in a bag, and then just be on your way. Here are the beans. Wow, look at the size of those beans. That looks like a bean stew. I'm gonna place that in the hot water of this pot and heat that one up as well. So while the main entrees are heating, let's go ahead and try these. And these are two types of potted meat. Let's go ahead and open this one first. This one I think is gonna be the more spreadable one. Yes, indeed. And with that, we're gonna try this. This is a very lightweight package, feels like air. And these are little rye crisps. And here they are, look at that. So lightweight, almost weighs nothing and cracks almost like styrofoam with our spread. Get the lucky mouth. Mmm. Delicious, really smooth, smooth, smooth consistency. Great crunch of the cracker. The cracker does have a styrofoamy texture, but it's fresh and has a nice crisp texture, which is a great contrast to the smooth and creamy pate. The pate tastes pretty livery. If you don't like liver, if you don't like pate, you might find this a bit difficult to ingest. And when I say livery, I mean kind of irony, a little bit metallic tasting. To me, it's scrumptious. Mm. And these crisps are delightful as well. A really great, light, crunchy texture. They actually remind me a lot of Japanese senbei although it doesn't have that kind of MSG laden, sweet and salty coating on the outside, the texture is quite similar. All right, let's open our other can of meat. Ooh, yes. This has a much 
coarser texture to it. You can actually see the kind of chunks of meat in there. There's a little bit of meat jelly. And this looks a little bit more like luncheon meat. It smells a little bit like Vienna sausages. Here we go. Mmm. And that's absolutely delicious. It tastes a little bit chickeny to me, but it's not overly salty. It has a really soft texture, actually. I was expecting it to be a little bit more resilient, but it's not. It's soft, and it's not like earth-shatteringly salty like Spam is. It's great. I love that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely delicious. I would make a sandwich out of that any day. Mmm. Let's go ahead and make our beverages with our paper cups. So cool. Okay, this one is a lemon. This one's green tea and lemon. Raspberry or forest fruit mix. So I guess we'll find out, but these two are the same. Okay, add the granules to that. Pretty big grains there. This one smells like raspberry. This is the green tea lemon. Look at that. Let me open these other two and see what flavor this is. Oh, this is the same flavor as this one, kind of a raspberry. And this one is the same one as this one. So Matt says it, these can be prepared either cold or hot. I would use the water purifier tablets if I had any, but since I don't, I'm just going to use some regular tap water. I'm just going to add some water to there. Here's what comes in the utensil packet. I love this tiny spoon. I've never seen a spoon this tiny before in terms of just a disposable spoon. I love it. I'm gonna use that to stir my beverage. And this spoon, I have to say, the serving spoon is a nice one. It's nice and generous and large. The bowl is much larger than a typical, you know, plastic throwaway spoon. The fork and knife seem to be pretty standard issue. And here is the napkin. This has like a tea-like color. And let's stir this one. It dissolves really easily, actually. All right, let's give the raspberry one a taste first. Cheers. Mmm, smells good. Mmm. Mmm. It's got the texture and flavor of a electrolyte drink. There's a little bit of slipperiness to it. It's lightly sweetened, good raspberry flavor, but not too sweet like that. It doesn't taste so artificial either. It doesn't taste like Kool-Aid. That is lemon, but it has some color to it. So it might be a lemon tea. Mmm. That actually tastes a lot like Limpton's instant lemon tea. It's pretty good. Let's have one with hot water. Ooh, that has more of a lemony flavor for sure. Mmm, that actually reminds me of Theraflu without the Thera. <laughs> Theraflu is a over-the-counter medication that you can get here in the US and you drink it like a tea, but it's lemon flavored and it's bitter and tastes like medicine and it has a fever reducer, so it's supposed to help you with your cold. Of course, this doesn't have the medication in it, so it just tastes like a hot lemony drink. Not bad. Here are my main entrees. So this one is the pork neck stew. And with these, I'm gonna have these. And these are like hardtack biscuits. And Matt told me to be very careful because it's been known that people have chipped teeth on them. Rather than being square, these are rectangles. It looks like there's little bits of fennel seed in there. Oh my gosh, look how hard this is. Oh, super hard. This looks hearty. Lots of vegetables, might be cabbage. I see carrots, I see some beans, and a nice big hunk of pork right here. What I'm gonna do is soak my cracker right in there. Let it absorb some of that broth. All right, here we go. Mmm, that's really good. A nice hearty porky stew, great pork flavor. Very tender meat, good strong flavor of celery actually. Lots of celery, a little bit of onion, and the sauce is pretty brothy. It's almost like a soup. It tastes a little tinny, but this is in a can after all, so we shouldn't be surprised. And the carrots are nice as well. All right, let's see if we can bite into the hardtack. Here we go. <laughs> I can. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a little bit sweet. It's kind of like a biscuit. It's a little bit sweet. It goes well with the broth in here. Very dense. And it has a little bit of kind of an anise flavor from the, what I think are fennel seeds. Mm-hmm. I bet this actually would go really well with coffee. So even with a good soaking, these remain very, very hard. Ah. Mm-hmm, but 
pretty tasty. These are actually tastier than the hardtack that I've had in the past. These have a little bit of that kind of anise fennel flavor as opposed to the regular hardtack, which tastes more like saltines, but very, 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 very hard. And this is the bean stew. Look at that. Look at the size of those beans. Those are lovely. This also contains some meat. Looks almost like bacon. Ooh, look, nice big piece of sausage right there. Oh yes. Mmm, that's really good. It's got a little bit of kind of a oil slick on top so your lips get all kind of shiny and slick. That has a really great smoky flavor, probably from the additions of this meat in here and the sausage, but it's not salty. Beans are really, really tender and plump and soft without being mushy. Delicious. Try the sausage next. I'm gonna try that on a cracker. Wow, that looks like kielbasa. Mm-hmm. This is definitely one of the better entrees I've had in these international rations. Absolutely delicious. So while I have my crisp out, let's go ahead and try some of this jam and honey as well. And honey. <laughs> Look at honey that looks like this. Just means it's crystallized. It's not bad. Honey doesn't ever go bad. And put that on my crisp. Mmm. I love honey. Sweet, delicious, wonderful. Let's try some of this jam. Mmm. That jam is delicious. Has a nice tang to it. Tastes a little bit like blackberry. Scrumptious. Nice little snack with tea. <laughs> Instant coffee mix. Ooh, and Matt was right. This is like pulverized, it's like a powder. So Matt says there's no creamer included in this ration because coffee is usually consumed black. So let's give that a go. And this tastes exactly like freeze-dried coffee, that same familiar camping yumminess. Mm. The next item I have is this, and this is some dried fruit. I can eat it plain or I can also rehydrate it. That's why it's in this resealable plastic bag. Ooh, ooh. Look at that. That is freeze-dried fruit. This is actually one of my son's favorite snacks and looks like this contains strawberries and apples and some bananas, but it's also called space fruit or space food and it's been freeze-dried. So it's really, really, really light and airy, but they're absolutely delicious. We personally love the strawberries and the raspberries best. Mm-hmm. Great, crisp, dry texture. A little bit kind of styrofoamy, but not squeaky at all. But the best part is the flavor. Just intensely flavored of fruit. That was strawberry. This looks like it might be an apple. Mmm, so, so, so good. Love it. Wonderfully concentrated flavor of true fruit. Doesn't taste artificial at all. Has the natural sweetness. Absolutely scrumptious. Mmm, mmm. That was pineapple. Yum! Next we have a fruit bar. Ooh. Now this is really interesting. I had this once before, and the first time I had it, I wasn't sure about this paper on the outside. This is completely edible, and it keeps the fruit bar from sticking to your fingers. And I believe it's made out of rice. You can kind of peel it off, but it's a bit styrofoamy, but it's entirely edible. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Great. Mmm. I believe this paper is also called Oblaten in German. Sorry, German friends, if I'm totally wrong, but that's what I remember. And I had this kind of edible paper as well. And this is delicious. It's hardly sweet at all. It just tastes completely natural, nice and tangy. It has a texture a bit like a granola bar. There's some kind of oaty toothiness to it, but full of fruity flavor. At the very end, you can feel some more added toothiness. It feels like it's almost like poppy seeds or some kind of nut in there as well. All right, look at this. It's a full-size chocolate bar. I like your style. This is a dark chocolate bar. So it looks like this chocolate bar got exposed to a little bit of heat, so we've got some blooming here. The chocolate is still good. Its texture is just gonna be a little bit different. This size seems to have gotten spared, so let's eat this side. Mmm. Let's try some with coffee. 
Yum. <laughs> mm. Actually, very generous amount of chocolate bar. I love that. Enough for yourself, enough to share, enough to pack for later. And then you have some hot coffee. It's perfect. All right, so lastly, let's clean up our teeth with some xylitol gum. Two very nice shiny pieces of xylitol gum. Mmm, nice and crisp and fresh. Spearmint flavored, nice little candy coating on the outside. The gum is nice and tender and soft in the middle. Nice and refreshing. Really great way to polish off a really great ration. Super impressed with this ration. I liked everything about it. I like that it included a stove. I love the quality of the ingredients. I love that the cans are resealable. That is something that I've never seen in any other ration. And the main entrees were well seasoned without being overly salty. The potted meats were great. Everything was considered. Everything was well packaged and just a very thoughtful and tasty ration. Big thanks to Matt for sending this to me and for sending me my great gear. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Be sure to check out the military playlist if you want to see more of these ration taste tests. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Subscribe, like, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Why is it so dark in here?